All right, everybody, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. We've still got a few people who are logging in, uh, but we'll go ahead and start with some housekeeping items and some introductions. So first off, I just want to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Welcome to Yokogawa's web seminar series titled Fundamentals of Electrical Power Measurements. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to attend this seminar, and I hope that you found this seminar helpful and informative. Before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping items. The audio part of this seminar can be accessed either through the teleconference number provided in the info tab of your WebEx manager window or through your PC speakers. To hear the audio through your PC, select the Communicate tab and join the audio broadcast. And this webinar will last approximately one hour. Towards the end of the presentation, we will have a Q&A session where, time permitting, our featured speaker, Bill Gathridge, will answer some of the questions received from the audience. If your question is not answered during the presentation, please be assured that we will have answers sent to you via email. All these questions should be submitted in the Q&A windows or the chat window located on the lower right hand of your screen. Our featured present presenter for this event is Bill Gathridge, Product Manager at Yokogawa. Bill is responsible for the Power Analyzer product line as well as other measuring instruments. He has over 20 years experience with Yokogawa in the area of precision electrical power measurements. Bill has been running both live and WebEx seminars on various power measurement topics and applications for the past 10 years. He is a member and vice chairman of the ASMC, ASME PTC 19.6 Committee on Electrical Power Measurement for Utility Power Plant Performance Testing. He is also a member of the RTCA DO160 Committee for Aircraft Power Testing and has worked with the ASHRAE Committee on Variable Speed Drive Testing. Bill has a degree in electrical engineering from Purdue University. Now, without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Bill. Thank you, uh, Christina, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending our webinar today. And this is part of uh, Yoka Gala's uh, commitment to, to you by providing you not only uh, instrumentation solutions, uh, but uh, education for electrical power measurements. So today, uh, fundamentals of electrical power measurements, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to look at uh, some of the basics of electrical power measurements to start with. Uh, we're going to start with the theory using a uh, precision power analyzer. We're going to look at single phase power measurements, some of the current sensors, uh, types of sensors that you should use, then study some three phase power measurements and define what is a two watt meter and a three watt meter method. Part two, we'll look at power factor measurements. What is displacement power factor and true power factor, the differences? Uh, we'll look at uh, power factor measurements in single phase and three phase circuits, and then cover a few applications for you. Then uh, we have a section on power measurements using a digital oscilloscope. So we'll take our theory that we've just covered and apply it uh, not from the power analyzer part, but to a digital oscilloscope. We'll cover some of the do's and don'ts of using a scope for your power measurements, uh, give you some examples, and a comparison of a digital storage oscilloscope, a DSO, with a power analyzer. Hopefully, we'll answer your questions uh, as, as we go along. And if you do have other questions, uh, please submit them, as, uh, as we said, in the uh, uh, chat or the question window, and we'll get back to you. So. A little bit about Yokogawa. Uh, they were founded in 1915, of course, in Japan. Uh, they were the first to produce and sell electric meters in Japan. Our North American operations uh, was established in 1957 as Yokogawa Corporation of America. Uh, now our worldwide sales are in excess of $4.3 billion. Yokogawa operates 84 different companies worldwide, uh, over 19,000 employees, and we operate in 33 countries. Our instrumentation uh, has changed quite a bit. The picture up on the left is a, about a 1930s vintage uh, standard AC voltmeter, 0.2% uh, accuracy class. And it was a moving coil type meter. It had the uh, a pointer with a mirrored scale so that you can use that mirrored scale for uh, exact uh, readout on the uh, dial. And 
I like to think of, you know, you look at that case, the woodwork and the craftsmanship that went into those cases was almost as much probably as it went into the uh, movement assembly itself. So um, they were, uh, you know, a, a real precision type of an instrument compared to our digital type instruments that we're using now. We're coming to you uh, today from uh, Yokoyama Corporation America. We're located in Noonan, Georgia. Where's Noonan, Georgia? Well, we're just a little bit south and west of Atlanta, Georgia. So we'll start with our electrical power measurements. And I said, let's review some basics to get started. I like to start with Ohm's law. Uh, this is the basis, uh, you know, for all of our electrical measurements. Uh, it applies to DC, but then it uh, can expand into AC. We're going to be talking about power or the wattage. And basically, uh, the wattage is the voltage times the current in the simplest forms. Uh, some other ways of measuring power is the I squared R or E squared divided by R. So this is just kind of the fundamentals, the basics of where we start uh, with our power measurement. Some things that we want to uh, start with in uh, some, some comparisons, and this has to do with a sine wave, a sinusoidal waveform. When we talk about the average, the RMS, and the peak-to-peak -peak values. So if we know the RMS value, okay, we take a, a voltmeter and we check the RMS voltage, say, of our line power. And if we want to know what the peak is, now this is a sine wave. So if we know the RMS value, the peak on a sine wave multiplies by 1.414. If we want to know the uh, average or the mean value uh, from that RMS, this is like the half cycle average or the mean value, uh, that's, we can multiply that RMS value by 0.9. Now, an important function here is a lot of the mechanical um, movement meters, the moving coil meters, were average responding. And they had to make a scale, a um, mechanical scale, to read RMS. So that scale, if we had an average responding uh, voltmeter as an example, had a multiplier on it of 1.11. And this is still used in some of our applications, and uh, we may cover this a little bit later. So some uh, conversions that uh, we, we may use as we go along, and you'll know where they come from. Here's one of the screens from a power analyzer just to show you where these measurements are made. Uh, we set this up on a calibrator and read our 120 volt uh, RMS value, U for voltage, RMS, and uh, number one just means it was on a channel or element number one of the power meter. And this is U mean, which is the uh, mean value scaled to RMS. This would be like the moving coil meter, okay? So it basically reads the same. This is uh, a math function to show us the uh, average, that uh, half cycle average. Okay, and then the peak value, 169.99, 170 volts. And then if we look at the sine wave, you can see that relationship uh, and about where they're at on the waveform. So our RMS value at 120 with the top cursor and the uh, half cycle average mean at 108. So let's look at our electrical power measurements now. First of all, what's a watt? Well, it's a unit, a unit of power that's equal to one joule of energy per second. Well, in simple terms, with a DC source, watts is volts times amps, right from Ohm's law. Now, if we have an AC source, then watts is going to be the voltage times the current times power factor. So AC has the power factor component. So with our AC power measurement, we have active power, typically defined as watts, with the unit of P for power. And that's our RMS voltage times the RMS current times power factor. This is also sometimes referred to as a true power or real power or active power. Now the apparent power is just the volt amps. And it uses a symbol S 
and that's the RMS voltage times the RMS current. This is a display from one of our power analyzers. The yellow waveform, uh, pretty much a sine wave, that's the voltage. And the green waveform that has a lot of the uh, distortion and uh, noise on it, that's the current waveform, it's off a of power supply. So let's look at our measurements. Uh, we had the voltage, uh, symbol U for voltage, and that's U RMS, and one just means it was on an element one of this power analyzer. So we're reading line voltage 118 uh, volts. And we had the current as a light load 0.6376 amps. So if we multiply those two together, we get the volt amps, the S, 75.67. If you have a calculator and you want to check that, uh, just multiply those two together. Then our power factor, and power factor, if you're not familiar with it, uses the symbol lambda. And this is an international symbol that we use for power factor now. I'm not quite sure where it came from, um, but uh, we're using lambda uh, for power factor. And so the power factor on this was 0.9657. So if we multiply the volt amps times the power factor, we should get the watts of 73.07 watts. And this has been on a 60 hertz line. And I just uh, displayed the uh, total harmonic distortion for the current, just uh, to give you an idea, it's 18% uh, distortion on all that uh, noise. So just to review again, watts, which is power, is the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the power factor. Or from our display, it's U RMS1 times I RMS1 times lambda1. And the volt amps, this is simple terms, uh, unit S, and that's the RMS voltage times the RMS current. Our digital power analyzers that, uh, that we use today are entirely electronic, and they use uh, some form of a digitizing uh, technique to convert analog signals to the digital form. And we're using high-resolution, high-speed digitizers in our power analyzers to digitize those incoming waveforms. Then we use digital signal processing to determine the actual uh, measurement values. Now, if we're using an oscilloscope uh, for power measurement, it should have special firmware to make these true power measurements. Now, any type of a digitizing uh, instrument I say is somewhat restricted because it's sampled data. Okay, it uses you know it's digitizing, so it is sampled data. So there can be, depending on your sample rate, there can be some uh, you know time between the sampled points. Now many of our power analyzers and scopes used for power analysis, power scopes, uh, may use an FFT algorithm for additional power and harmonic analysis. So harmonics is a, also a very important part of our power measurement. Now the actual equation that we use, power is average, it's averaged over time. So we take the digitized value and we have an instantaneous value of voltage, we multiply that times that sampled instantaneous value of current. We accumulate those and we integrate them over some time period and multiply by one over T. So this is the equation that we use, the technique that we use in our instrumentation. So it's the instantaneous voltage multiplied by the instantaneous current and then integrated over a some time period. So here's our equation for power. And then just like RMS, the remain squared for voltage and current, we take the digitized value of voltage Accumulate that over some time period, multiply it by 1 over T, and then take the square root for both voltage and current. This calculation method will provide a true power measurement and a true RMS measurement on any type of a waveform. It includes all the harmonic content up to the bandwidth of the instrument. So we're making true power and true RMS measurements regardless of the type of uh, signal that you're looking at, up to the bandwidth capability of the instrument. 
So let's make a power measurement now. So we have a load, okay, has two wires, it's connected to it. So we're going to put our watt meter in, uh, in line here. We're going to measure the current in series, and we're going to measure the voltage from the line to line. And then this will give us the power of the watt reading. Now you'll notice that there are polarity marks. Okay, this is the low side, and the low side of the voltage, the high side of the voltage, the high side of the current. It's AC, but there's still the polarity, the instantaneous polarity is still very important. If you get these turned around, then basically we have a phase reversal, and you'll probably come up maybe with a negative power reading. And at that point, you may be calling me and say, hey, Bill, my, my meter's reading negative. Well, it's real simple. You have to follow these polarity uh, readings, so whatever type of instrument you're using, follow the manufacturer's connection very carefully and make sure you do get those polarity connections correct. So on a single phase uh, two-wire system, uh, the voltage and the current that are detected are that that's applied directly to the load. And the indication on the meter is the power or the wattage that's being dis dissipated by the load. Looking at the display from one of our power analyzers, uh, we had 120 volts and it had about one amp. Okay, multiply those together, got a little over 120.06 VA. I measured uh, 96 watts and that would be a power factor 0.7998. If you want to check that, again, just multiply your VA times the power factor, and you should come up with that wattage reading. Uh, Q is the uh, VAR, uh, volt amp reactive component, and uh, it's on a 60 hertz uh, line. And this bottom measurement is what we call crest factor. And it's uh, indicated as uh, CF, crest factor. And this is crest factor of I, which is current, again, on element number one. And crest factor is just a ratio of the peak value divided by the RMS value. In a lot of our applications, crest factor can be very important on highly distorted or waveforms that have a very um, you know, high peak. And it has to do with the way our uh, instrumentation with our A to D converters and things are able to operate is that we don't over, overrange those with a high peak. So crest factor uh, is an important measurement that we need to watch every now and then. Let's look at current sensors. Um, the power analyzers can only take so much current directly. Um, 20 up to, well, we've got some that will go up to 50 amps. So if we go above that, then we're going to have to use some type of a current sensor. Um, we at, uh, here at Yokogawa, uh, we resell or a, a distributor for AEMC that makes some very nice uh, clamp-on type CTs, uh, scope probes. If you're using scope probes, use scope probes on scopes, not on a power analyzer. There can be some mismatch uh, on the impedance and the connections with a scope probe on a power analyzer, so we don't recommend that. Um, so use uh, scope probes on scopes. Now, Yokogawa also manufactures several of our own uh, good precision uh, current and uh, voltage potential, uh, voltage transformers. There's some uh, current transformers. They have a window, and they have some taps on top of them for some low current measurements and the uh, secondary 5 amp output. For DC measurements, uh, we can use some uh, DC shunts, and we resell shunts made by RAM meter. Uh, Pearson Electronics is a very popular type, a high-frequency uh, current transformer used a lot in the lighting applications for the high frequency. And then we have a special uh, current transformer uh, that was um, uh, we developed with LAM, uh, Dan Physic. That's a very high accuracy, uh, accuracies in the area of 0.02 percent of uh, a full scale. It's an active type. It operates from DC up to very high frequencies. So it is an active type. And there's uh, some electronics inside the head. And then we have the signal conditioning power supply unit that it's connected to. This can handle up to six of these transformer heads. 
and you'll see that we uh, supply some primary current cables that have a special wrap through the window, and then you have uh, big uh, eye lugs that can connect uh, right into your switch gear or something like that. This helps the uh, magnetic flux transfer around the CT for the uh, low frequency, the DC operation, and improves the overall system performance of that transformer. So these are some very special, very high accuracy, operates from DC to high frequency current transformers. Some selection considerations, of course, is accuracy. This is usually specified as the CT turns ratio accuracy. A phase shift, got to be concerned about phase shift in the CT. The frequency range, of course, uh, DC. Um, if you're using DC and AC, some of the Hall effect or the active type that we just uh, went over. Um, the standard instrument transformer typically has a, uh, a frequency band of uh, maybe 30 hertz and higher, uh, but there's various types, so you have to be aware of the frequency that you need to measure. Uh, the instrument compatibility, what's the output? Uh, there's different types of outputs, uh, millivolts per amps or milliamps per amps, or just straight amps like an instrument transformer with a 5 amp secondary. Uh, the impedance and the load or burden that you put on that CT is very important. And as I mentioned earlier, scope probes, use them on a scope, not a power analyzer. And then, of course, you've got the physical requirements of size, the Connections? Do you need a clamp, or can you get by with a donut type? And how? What's your distance to, to your load? So, if you have questions on that, we can help you. Um, you know, match your CT to the instrument. Word of caution: Never open circuit the secondary side of a current transformer while it's energized. Uh, the CT is is a current source, and by Ohm's law again, uh, E equals I R. Okay, if that R is open circuit becomes very large, then the internal voltage inside the CT becomes very high. And it can damage, it can saturate the coil, uh, destroy the transformer, uh, it could even be a, a dangerous situation. So we never want to open circuit the secondary of a standard uh, type of instant transformer. Now let's look at a single phase three wire power measurement. Sometimes we call this uh, maybe a split phase uh, here in the U.S. So we got a device. Uh, it's got uh, two wires providing the, uh, the you know the, the current, and we have a neutral. This would be maybe like our electric uh, dryers, electric ranges, uh, something like that. So the total power is going to be the sum of our two watt meter readings. So we put the watt meter inside uh, uh, measure line one and line two, connect voltage line to neutral. So on this single phase, three wire system or split phase, uh, the voltage and the current detected by the meters are those that are applied directly to the load. Each meter okay, reads the power that's being connected to that, that, uh, that phase. And total power is just the algebraic sum of the two meters. Here's a display from one of our power analyzers. Um, we're reading line-to-line -line voltage, 111 volts. Um, the current on one leg was 20 points, uh, almost 20.8 and uh, 22.6. You can see the currents are different. That's why we need to monitor the current in each line. And then the total power is the sum of the two power readings at, uh, in this example, 4.8, and we were on a 60 hertz line. So we have our VA reading. Now look at the power factor. Power factor on one line was unity. That means it's totally resistive. The power factor on the other line was not, so it had some type of uh, inductance to it. And the total power factor, uh, 0.99. And the actual uh, device that was being tested was an electric clothes dryer. So one side had all resistance uh, heaters. The other side, uh, the line neutral, had the uh, motor. And that's why there's a difference. And that's why, again, on this type of a circuit, we really need to measure with a 2-watt meter method. Here's a waveform. Uh, these are your line to neutral uh, voltages, the blue and the green. Here's your line to line voltage. 
And then here's your uh, phase currents. Okay, so you can see this phase current with that phase voltage. Okay, they're both positive going, so they're going to multiply together and give you positive watts. This one is 180 degrees out of phase on the current and the voltage, so when those multiply together, you still have positive watts, so those why they add up to be positive on both sides to give you the total power. Here's a phase relation uh, uh, vector diagram. You can see one side, voltage and current, uh, right on top of each other because there's no phase shift. And on the other side, you can see a phase shift between the voltage and the current. And that phase shift was about 8 degrees down here. Okay. Now, the measurement of power um, comes back to theory um, by uh, Blondell's transformation. And that states that we measure total power with one less watt meter than the number of wires in the circuit. So think about what we've done. Single phase, uh, two wire, we did one watt meter. On my single phase, three wire, or split phase, I used two watt meters. So on my three phase, three wire, we're going to use two watt meters to measure total power. And the three phase, four wire, we're going to use the three watt meter method. So Blondell went through all the theory, all the vector analysis uh, to prove, and this is uh, the standard by which everybody goes by. So on a three-phase system, uh, we typically think of the, uh, the phases being 120 degrees uh, apart here. If we measure them with a... Uh, you know, waveform analyzer or something like that. Real nice sine waves, evenly spaced at 120 degrees apart. So let's first look at our three-phase four-wire system. It's a little simpler. We have some type of a load. I have my three phases and a neutral. Typically here in the U.S., a uh, typical... Uh, Line to neutral voltages are 120 or 277. If they're measured line to lines, typically 208 to 480. The relationship between line to line and line to neutral is our line to line voltage is the square root of 3 times the line to neutral. And that's where this relationship comes from. So on our uh, four wire system, let's put three watt meters in there. We'll measure the current in each line and the voltage from line to neutral. And the total power then is going to be the sum of the three watt meter readings. So the three meters use the fourth wire as a common voltage reference. And each meter indicates the phase power. And then the total power is just the algebraic sum of the three meters. So basically it's just three single phase measurements that we add together. So on a three phase four wire system, it's pretty simple. You do have to make sure your polarities are correct because you want all three meters reading positive. So from a display of one of our power analyzers, you can see the, the balanced power conditions, pretty much uh, even there, 20 watts add up to 66. Here's our total power factor. This was done off of an uh, uh, electric uh, variable speed drive. That's why the frequency is only running at uh, 30 hertz. So I can see the phase power factors as well as the total and the phase currents. If we look at the uh, waveforms, we can see the voltage and the current waveforms on each phase. So we can see the, the voltages measured line to neutral and the phase currents. If we look at the uh, vector diagram, we've got our phase voltages 120 degrees apart and each of the phase currents. And those are about uh, 30, uh, about 39, uh, a little bit less than 40 degrees. Now let's look at a three-phase, three-wire system. So I have some type of a load. We have three wires coming out of it. So three-phase, three-wire. 
Now remember Blondell's transformation. We measure total power with one less watt meter than the number of wires. So we only need two watt meters. Okay. So we don't need this third watt meter. We'll put follow the manufacturer's wiring diagram. And, uh, this is very important in how to connect the system. Because different power meters could have a different way of connecting the two watt meters. But polarity phase is very important. And again, follow the manufacturer's wiring diagrams on this. But we're going to use the two watt meter method. So the total power is going to be, in this example, the sum of uh, watt meter A and watt meter B. Now, with this type of connection, each meter will measure the phase current. But the voltage is not phase voltage. They're connected line to line. So now, the readings that we get on the watt meter will not be a phase power. And I say this configuration is uh, very non-intuitive <laughs> because uh, you're, you're getting a watt meter reading, but it is not phase power. And it has to do with the phase relation that you're making with the voltage being a line-to-line -line measurement. So if we look at our um, watt meter, the two watt meter method, you'll see we have two watt readings. They're different. Okay, they're not phase power, but they total up to be, in this case, L is number one and number two, total up to give me my total power of 30.8 watts. Now I do get the uh, voltages, line voltages, the phase currents, and the total power. And here's the VA on each one, because there's no phase um, uh, difference on those. The two watt meter um, method uh, kind of uh, can be less confusing because with two watt meters, typically don't think about getting phase power, but it is still an accurate total power measurement. Now we have a special connection in our uh, meters um, for a three phase three wire system that we call three V three A connection. And this method will give you all three voltages and all three currents. It will give you the correct total power, total power factor, and VA measurements. And this is important on either a balanced or an unbalanced three-wire system. So sometimes you may not have a balanced system. And this 3V3A method is the proper way to make those me uh, measurements. So here's our three um, meters. Uh, we, we get a power indication, and here's my total power. It's the sum of one and two in this example, okay, and I get the total power. But you notice that is not phase power. Let's look at uh, another measurement example of uh, an, what we call a delta measurement. We got our three phase three wire, three V, three A connection. Now the power measured in a three-phase three-wire is going to be equal to the power measured as a three-phase four-wire. It's the same load. So here, this first part, these are our line-to-line -line voltages, 135 volts, and our total power connected on a, a three-phase three-wire, 20.49. Now I'm looking at my calculation here with the line-to-neutral voltages. So there's a special processing uh, capability that's going on inside this power analyzer. And now, with this processing, I can see the true phase power. You see, they're all balanced. It's like a four-wire connection. And my total power is still the same, 20.49, measured as a four-wire system. So this is a special measurement function that we have. It's called delta measurements. And then we can get phase power on a three-wire system. Now here I set up a three-phase, three-wire system and uh, created a neutral on one side. And you can see it's the same load. So whether I measured them as a uh, three-phase, three-wire or as a three-phase, four-wire, the power came out the same. 
and the power factor came out the same. Has to because the load's the same. So the measurement is the same either way we do it. Okay, let's look at uh, power factor measurements. Here's a question. Usually we're taught in school that the power factor is the cosine of the angle between voltage and current. Well, if power factor is the cosine of the angle between voltage and current, how do we measure power factor on a three-phase circuit? Okay, we'll show you how we do that. Most of our circuits contain some type of a resistance and capacitance and inductance and some type of a series or parallel combination. I just put them in all parallel here just to make it simple. But most of our circuits contain those com uh, components. With an inductor, the current will lag the voltage in time. So our voltage is the yellow waveform, the current is the green, and so that is lagging current is lagging the voltage in an inductor. And we just set this thing up and we have a uh, uh, an angle here. It's uh, lagging and we use G to represent lag. Okay, and it's lagging by 44.77 degrees. With a capacitor the current will lead the voltage. So here we set this up on our uh, calibrator and now the current, which is the green waveform, is leading in time to the voltage. And we use a D for lead, okay? So we use the last letter of lead or lag. So it's uh, leading by 45.09 degrees. And cosine of that uh, uh, angle uh, it'll give us our uh, power factor that we're measuring at uh, over here 7.0604. Some real world examples. Uh, inductive load like an AC motor. Okay, Current is lagging the voltage. Here's one that we did. Uh, this was a, a compact uh, fluorescent lamp that had a ballast in it, and uh, it was a capacitive type of a load. And in this case, the current is leading the voltage with a capacitive type of a <coughs> circuit. Well, if we're going to make a power factor measurement, power factor being cosine of the angle between voltage and current, then we have some type of a distorted waveform like this. Where is our time reference? Where is the zero crossing? How are we going to measure that reference? Everybody would tell me something different as to you know where it is. Well, we might compare the peaks, or uh, might compare uh, you know halfway across this this bottom part. Uh, we're going to get all kinds of different answers. We don't know where the reference is to make that time you know that time measurement. So, power factor for a sine wave, and a sine wave only. Power factor be, be the cosine of the angle between voltage and current, or cosine of theta. This is typical what we're taught in school. This is defined as displacement <clears throat> power factor. But for all other waveforms, true power factor is watts divided by VA. And this is the formula that we use in all the power analyzers and uh, uh, scopes with the power analysis function. It comes back from our vector diagrams. Uh, we have uh, watts on the base of the triangle, uh, the, uh, the VAR. Uh, this is for an inductive circuit. If it was capacitive, uh, that vector would be going down. And then our volt amp, OK? And then with our trig functions, uh, true power factor, is this angle, uh, which is watts divided by VA. So let's look at some measurements. True power factor on this uh, waveform off of a uh, power supply, uh, power factor being watts divided by VA, 
So we measure our watts, 8713 for the VA, and we get our lambda for our power factor, 0.76651. And we can look at the vector diagram. Now if we look at the vector diagram and do the same thing, we can see we have an angle of 21.06 degrees. So the uh, uh, cosine of 21.06 is 0.9332. Now if we use watts divided by VA, our watt measurement in this example uh, is the 48 watts and the VA is 51.6. Uh, so watts divided by VA comes out the same thing. 9.332. This is on a sine wave. So on a sine wave, the measurements are the same, but we have to use the true power on a distorted waveform. Now in a three-phase four-wire system, uh, if we look at the power factor, total power factor is total watts divided by total VA. And that's going to be the sum of the wattages divided by the sum of the VAs. Now on a three-phase three-wire system, using a two-watt meter method, okay, we've got total watts, it's going to be watt one plus watt two, and we're all going to use uh, two VAs, so it's going to be VA one plus VA two. We're going to multiply that by the square root of three because it is a line-to-line -line voltage measurement, and we're going to divide by two to average this. Now if the load is unbalanced, say my currents are different. I'm only using two currents. So this VA could be in error. We're not getting the true story of our total VA if these are unbalanced. We don't know what that third one is and what this average uh, may come out to be. So again, this goes back to our uh, special uh, measurement using the 3V, 3A method. And now for power factor, our total VA, we look at all three VAs, add them up, multiplying by the square root of 3 because it's a line-to-line -line voltage measurement, divide by 3 to get the average. Now, if the load is either balanced or unbalanced, we will be making a true power factor measurement and a true VA measurement. If these currents are unbalanced, we're going to read them all. Total power is still the 2 watt meter method. So here's just another example our 3V, 3A measurement method. Using the 2 watt meter method, we've got the total power and our total VA, 93, and then 49, and our power factor, 0.53. And that's what we're reading right here. Let's look at a couple applications here. One that comes up quite a bit is uh, standby power, energy star, and the, uh, if you've heard of it, IEC 62301 testing. Uh, IEC 62301 is an international standard. It has to do with the uh, electrical appliances and the measurement of standby power. It is a hardware and a software measurement solution. This international standard specifies the methods of measurement of electrical power. So the object of this standard then is to provide a standardized method that all manufacturers will test to. The standard includes 25 additional standards for various types of appliances. There's a standard for electric uh, clothes dryer, a standard for electric range, a uh, standard for air conditioning, okay? And this standard, these 25, defines each one of those products and how to measure it and what the limits are. So it uh, defines the, the test parameters, the limits, such as the uh, limits for THD, which is uh, the harmonics, total harmonic distortion, for power and uh, other, app, uh, you know, other items appropriate to the product. In the U.S. and North America, uh, the Energy Star standard is typically used for, for testing these limits. So Energy Star and the IEC 62301 are very close in their uh, you know, testing limits. Now here's something that uh, you may have run into is uh, pulse power. Uh, this could be like a standby power. Uh, 
uh, one example we're probably pretty familiar with would be like a laser printer or a copy machine that has heaters in it. Those heaters are always turning off and on, and our power is always uh, pulsing. Okay, so we're getting this pulsed power. How are we going to measure that? If you're looking at a digital instrument, you know, the display is just going to go crazy, and an analog uh, meter, the, you know, it's just going to be, you know, back and forth. So uh, very, very difficult to, to measure that. So what we use uh, for this uh, standby power uh, is a um, average active power measurement. And this is done by looking at the energy. Okay, We integrate the, uh, the waveform over time, and that is watt hours divided by time. And this is the average active power measurement mode. So we're taking the integrated watt hour, divide out the time, and leaves us with, with power. Uh, this is the preferred method defined by the standard. Works on both steady state and fluctuating power sources. And it's the most accurate method to use. Actually, Yoko Gao pioneered uh, this uh, back in the year 2000 uh, with one of our early models, WT200. So this average active power is the way to measure fluctuating power or standby power measurements. We'll look at a couple other applications. Um, motor measurements. Uh, looking at the uh, pulse width modulation uh, of a variable speed drive. Uh, so in this type of an application with the PWM voltage, uh, we typically use that mean uh, measurement. Uh, gives us the fundamental. Uh, for the uh, DC uh, bus voltage, uh, typically we'll look at the uh, uh, peak voltage Okay, to get the top here, the DC. And we'll see our current has a lot of uh, noise and stuff like that on it. We have a whole webinar and uh, workshops on motor testing. If you need more information on this, uh, keep in touch with us. So uh, we have a lot of experience and capability on measuring these PWM waveforms and signals. Drive uh, device efficiency. Well, efficiency is just output power divided by input power, usually uh, expressed as a percentage. Now, you could use two meters, one on the input and one on the output. Um, the problem there is you don't know if those measurements are, are made simultaneously. There could be some time error due to uh, time skew. So the best way to do it is to use a multiple element power analyzer, one hooked up on the input, the other hooked up on the output. Those measurements are made exactly at the same time, and we can make very accurate measurements of your efficiency without any time skew. Some of our meters uh, actually have a uh, menu set up for efficiency measurements. Here's one that uh, shows we're, we're looking at a three phase, so we're looking at the total power output and a single phase power input and displays the efficiency. And it has several equations that you can write in here under uh, different conditions. So looking at our display, our output power, and this example was 30.8 uh, watts, and the input power was 54.9, almost 55. And then our drive, this was actually done on a drive, a variable speed drive, so our drive efficiency was uh, 56%. And you can see we had a power loss of 24 watts. This was on a variable speed drive. This was set up at, uh, you can see, uh, pretty low speed. 20 hertz, so that's why our efficiency in this example uh, is not very good. But this is, you know, I wanted to show you exactly what can happen here. Now you can characterize that whole efficiency over your different frequency ranges. Sometimes we need to look at a uh, startup, an inrush, and we have devices that can do that. Uh, so we're looking at a voltage waveform. We turn on the power. We see the power uh, start. And we can actually see a cycle by cycle, you know, power measurement, and we can put cursors on here and measure those. Okay, let's look at the uh, the final part here with our uh, digital oscilloscope for power measurements. Why do we want to use a digital oscilloscope for electrical power measurement? Well, I say we have a comfort level <laughs> with our with our scope. Uh, 
you know, we, we've used them in school uh, all along, and so uh, you know, we, we just have that uh, good feeling about using a scope for everything. Uh, we may not have used power analyzers in school or something like that, but we know how to use that scope in most of our applications. So it's that comfort level. Um, with scope, of course, you got your probes. Uh, they're uh, easy to connect. You have, uh, with the right scope, a uh, uh, power analysis math capabilities. Usually with our scope, we've got a high frequency bandwidth. We can uh, see the waveforms. and uh, So waveform display and analysis can be very important. And a lot of them have uh, built-in uh, analysis for the IEC uh, power quality standards. Now here's a special note. When using your oscilloscope, AC power is not just connecting a voltage probe to channel 1 and a current probe to channel 2 and then maybe using the simple math multiplying channel 1 times channel 2. That will not give you watts. That will give you VA. Remember our AC power measurement. We want to look at watts, active power. So it's the RMS voltage times the RMS current times the power factor. Apparent power is the VA, which is just volts times amps. So you have to go do things a little bit different with your scope. And again, we need a scope with the math algorithms to measure true power, where we're digitizing the voltage times the current accumulate those, integrate them over a time period to make a true power measurement. Let's compare a power analyzer to a, a DSO real quick. Uh, typically power analyzers operate DC to 2 megahertz. We know our scope's uh, DC uh, 500 megahertz up into the gigahertz range. Uh, for power, I say DC to about 50 megahertz because this is a limitation with uh, some of the current probes. Accuracy of the power analyzer, uh, 0.1 on the low end, 0.02 on the high end. Now this is a complete calibrated traceable measurement system to NIST. With the DSO, look at your scope, look at the specifications. Typically about 1.5% at the input terminals, and it's at DC. Check your specs. Typically, a scope is calibrated at DC only. So for power measurement, uh, it's based on the probes. Uh, I say we could get around 3.5%, maybe a little bit better. Uh, ranges with a power analyzer, uh, we can do direct connection, high voltages, up to 1,000 volts typically, and currents, uh, maybe up to 20 to 50 amps direct. With the DSO, we're going to have to use probes. This does have the advantage that uh, you know they, they do have high frequency response. They can be small, uh, easy to probe with, on, especially on the board level. Uh, the digitizers, typically with our power analyzer, we're using 16-bit digitizers, which is 65,000 levels of measurement calculation. Scopes typically are an 8-bit, 256 levels. Now there are some special uh, scopes with some uh, high resolution uh, inputs, but uh, typically we're looking at a 8-bit, 256 level scope. So a big difference there. Now there's a major challenge we have with our scope, and that's what we call a skew, or it's a delay, a time delay um, between the uh, characteristics of the voltage and the current probe. So we need to do a de-skew calibration. In other words, we need to get those uh, signal paths in line with each other. And a, a, a little example here, you can see the delay between the voltage and the current probe. And we offer a, a de-skew box as part of an uh, easy calibration to adjust that time delay. So if we look at um, a, a signal and we zoom around this rising edge, you can see the time delay between the voltage and the current probe. 
Then we go through the uh, de-skew operation, and this brings the two of them in phase with each other. So there's no time delay. And in our scopes, um, we have an auto de-skew function. So we hook up the voltage probes to the de-skew box and the current probe uh, to that uh, loop there. And then we can go through an auto de-skew function right on the front panel that um, puts out the pulse and adjusts the time delay between the two of them. This time delay really is a result, uh, it would have the effect of a uh, you know, phase shift power factor. So that's why it's important to get those two back in phase with each other. So typical measurements uh, where a scope is uh, the best to use, uh, board level work, component level, uh, looking at the power loss on uh, components, device power consumption, uh, noise levels, harmonics. And of course, we like our waveform display and analysis, inrush, and uh, transients. Let's look at a, a power supply input with a power analyzer. This is an input to a power supply. Uh, we can see we have pulse current, and uh, it's distorting our, our voltage a little bit. And we're measuring the, uh, the voltage, the current, the power, and the power factor with the power analyzer. Now let's look at what we're measuring with the scope. Same power supply, made simultaneously. We've got our voltage and our current. And we just did a, uh, a, a power uh, waveform display. Our data is all down here at the bottom, and it's uh, kind of compact, but uh, I put it over here in a comparison chart. So with the power analyzer, our voltage is read 118.28 against 117.27, about one volt difference. RMS currents were right on. The wattage, there was about one watt difference between the two of them, and just a little bit of difference between the power factor. So there is a little bit of difference uh, be, you know, between the two. Um, the power analyzer, again, is a traceable calibration. This is the one we should be comparing to. But your, your, your measurements are not that far off um, you know, with, with the scope in this application. Now let's look at a, uh, an inverter with a PWM pulse width modulator type of a uh, uh, waveform. So we've got our voltages, 176, and uh, the power at 44. Uh, PWM waveform, a lot of noise on the current side. Let's look at it with the uh, scope, okay? And uh, is the PWM uh, voltages again, uh, and the uh, current you can see with the uh, with the noise on it. And here's our uh, you know power waveform and our data uh, down here at the bottom. So I'm going to move that data over into a chart that we can see with the power analyzer. Again, we're 176. Uh, it's interesting. The voltage is reading a little bit higher. Uh, the uh, the current's about the same, um, 0 0.38, 0 0.39. Uh, the wattage is about two watts difference, and uh, the power factor's a little bit different. So there is some difference between the readings, and you have to realize that there will be some differences. Uh, this is uh, how we set up uh, one of our scopes for power measurement in that uh, we actually uh, put in these equations into a math field and for um, you know the power factor we're looking at uh, watts divided by VA and uh, we're looking at the uh, the power uh, calculation as an integral function. So it's using the same basic math functions. Okay. So what do you need for power measurements with a DSO? Well, we need an oscilloscope. You need one that will have a power analysis option to it. Uh, you may need one that has some probe power. Uh, probes, probably going to need differential voltage probes. Uh, you need your clamp-on current probes. Uh, maybe some high voltage probes uh, instead of the differential. Uh, you may need uh, an isolation transformer to isolate the scope. In other words, the scope inputs are grounded, uh, and so we have to be careful that we don't, uh, you know, get a, a, you know, ground loop that's going to blow up something. And then we need our de-skew device, okay, uh, to uh, eliminate any measured phase shift between the two probes, the voltage and the current probes. 
So that's what you will need to make accurate power measurements with your scope. So that uh, kind of wraps up uh, our, our webinar today. Uh, Yoking Out offers a you know, complete line of power measurement products. And we support you with our product application engineers, our field sales reps, sales managers, and factory support engineers. And we do offer a full NIST traceable calibration facility at our factory here in Noonan, Georgia. Some of our solutions include the power analyzers. We have a complete line of power analyzers to meet your application and, and budget. Uh, our oscilloscopes uh, that do have the power analysis uh, function. So various types of uh, oscilloscopes, different applications, and different uh, number of channels. Here's a, one of our new eight-channel uh, scopes that does have power analysis. We make portable power test instruments, handheld devices, uh, power quality work with the clamp-on CTs, uh, a single uh, clamp-on unit here for, uh, for power measurement. Been a long-time supplier of panel and switchboard analog meters. These are the old analog meters, okay, uh, and uh, for switchboard uh, panel work. Power transducers. Uh, typically used by our utilities, uh, you know, 50, 60 hertz type uh, application, voltage, power, current, all different types of power transducers. We have multifunction digital meters, so if you don't like the analog meters, we can give you, uh, for your panels, the digital meters. And then some real nice, uh, still analog portable instruments, uh, you know, voltage, current, wattage, uh, analog meters with mirrored scale to give you good, accurate reading. So uh, hopefully uh, we've helped you with a better understanding for electrical power measurements. So we've reviewed some of the basics. Uh, we've used the uh, power analyzer and a digital scope. We've looked at single phase and three phase circuits, uh, looked at some current sensors. Hopefully you understand what this two watt meter and three watt meter method are and how to use them. Uh, power factor, uh, we find that uh, power factor is two different types of power factor, displacement, cosine of the angle, or true power factor is watts divided by VA. And uh, give you a few measurement examples and uh, some applications. And then, looked at how to use your digital oscilloscope to make power measurements. And uh, the things that you need to do, you need to have a scope with a proper firmware in it to make power measurements, a uh, de uh, operation. And we looked at a few examples. And so that you understand the measurements that you're getting uh, could be a little bit different. So thank you for attending. We do have other web seminars, uh, and these are uh, from our uh, website. You can go to our technical library and look at the webinars on demand. And this is archived. So if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to uh, contact us. And uh, I'll let Christina then uh, close the meeting for us. And again, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Bill, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, we've run out of time for our Q&A session, so please be assured that if you did submit questions that they will be answered via email. I know that I did have a chance to answer a few of them during the session, um, but we will get to everybody's. And if you have not yet answered the poll questions, please do that for us at this time. It really helps us. Um, and with that, I'd like to once again thank you for attending and participating in this online web seminar. And we hope to see you online at our future seminars. Thank you.